Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can add your custom views and your modifiers to the Xcode library. Now, I already have a control over here, which is called the ratings view control. And I want to add this control to the Xcode library. So if I go to my content view and I press Command Shift L, I can open up the library and I can search for my control, which is called the ratings control. But you can see that I don't really see the ratings control over here. By the way, I can also open up the library over here by using the plus button. But if I search for a rating control, nothing comes up. If I search for the grid, well, the grid comes up. If I search for stack, the stack comes up and so on. But my own control, the custom control rating, doesn't come up. It would be nice if I'm able to add my control to the Xcode library so that other developers in my team can also access it when they get my code. So how do we do it? Let's go to the ratings view. And inside the ratings view or inside any other file, what we are going to do is we are going to be creating a library content structure which will be conforming to the library content provider. Now this feature is available in Xcode 12. I'm running Xcode 12 beta. So make sure that you are running Xcode 12 if you want to use this feature. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and create a library content which will be using the library content provider. Now there are a couple of functions that I can implement or properties I can implement in this since I want my view to be added to the Xcode library, I'm going to say views, which will return a library item. Now, since I want library item to be returned as an array, but I don't want to make it look like an array, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this around with library content builder, which is a view build, which is a property wrapper, but it's going to use view builder to return an array of items. Now inside this views property, I can go ahead and return library item. And the library item is going to specify, well, the type of the item that we want to return. So I'm going to go ahead and say ratings view because this is, a my, this is my view that I want to get returned. The rating is a bindable expression, bindable int. So I'm just going to provide some sort of a dummy value by giving it three star rating. And I'm gonna also go ahead and provide a title. Title is not really mandatory, but I'm providing a title so that I can easily search for my control. And I'm gonna go ahead and say ratings control or rating control or anything that you like. This is completely up to you. I'm also going to provide a particular category because I want my control to appear in a control category when we are adding from the Xcode library. So that's why I'm going to put control. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and build our application. And now we can go ahead and go to the content view. If I want to use my rating view control, I can open up the Xcode library and make sure that you select the control portion or the views portion. And let's go ahead and search for rating control. And you can see the rating control is right there. I can double click on it and it added a ratings view. I can go ahead and put this value anything I want over here and I can simply say rating and this is great, it works. So this means that we have just added our rating view to our Xcode library. Now the great thing about this is that this is all in code. So this means that if you check in your code and hopefully you will and your team members are going to download this code, then their library will also have the ratings view, which is super cool because they can simply press the command shift L, open up the Xcode library and add your rating control. So this is how you will add a view to the Xcode library. Now let's talk about that, how we can add a modifier to our Xcode library. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can apply the same principles to add our modifiers to the Xcode library. Let's say that I want to display an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, display an image which is called coffee. Let's see how it does. 
Now by default, the image is just going to try to be rendered in its original size, which is pretty big. So we want to apply different uh, modifiers to it. One of them is sizable. And I can go ahead and also say aspect ratio, and I can provide fill. And after this, I can also go ahead and say some sort of a frame. This means that I can provide a frame which is width of 100 and height of 100. Or you can select any frame that you like. And our, we also have our rating control. For the rating control, we can either provide some sort of a gap or padding. There we go. Okay, fine. Now, I will be using that again and again whenever I'm displaying an image. So how can I accommodate that instead of writing these three lines again and again? Well, I can simply go ahead and create an extension on the image, which is resize to fill. By the way, this portion and all of the inspiration for this particular video is taken from a lecture from a video at WWDC. I will also link the video in the show notes. So now instead of using resizable aspect ratio and frame, I can simply go ahead and say dot resized to fill, and I can provide the width and the height. So in this case, I'm just going to say 150 and 150. Great. And this works perfectly. But the problem is still that if I want to use this from the actual library, so if I open up the library, and if I go to the modifiers, which is this tab over here, and I search for resize to fill, you can see that it doesn't really come up. So using the same exact technique of heading the view, we can add our modifiers to the Xcode library. So I'm going to go back to my rating view. And inside the rating view, another thing that I'm going to create is the modified function. Now, base is a very important part because base represent the view or the thing in on which the modifier is being called. So where are we calling resize to fill or on which we element are we calling resize to fill? That is the image. So the base is image. Now over here in the body, I can go ahead and return the same thing, which is the library item. And inside the library item, I can say base, which is image, dot resize to fill. And I can fill it with some sort of a dummy values. Let's say 150 and 150. And that is pretty much it. And we also have to decorate this with library content builder so that we are able to return an array. There we go. Now this is added to the Xcode library. I will go back to my content view. And over here, I'm going to remove resize to fill. And I will press Command Shift L. And now select the modifiers, which is already selected. And let's go ahead and search for resize to fill. And there it is, resize to fill. Let's double click on it. And now I can go ahead and fill it out. And 115, 150 is perfectly fine. That's actually what I wanted. So now I can run this. So you can see that with ability to add your views to the Xcode library and also adding your modifiers to the Xcode library, uh, it makes your code and it makes your views as well as modifiers very, very reusable and discoverable. So if you're working in a team and they're constantly building these new custom views, all you need to do is to add the library content provider and add your views. And if you're working on some sort of a uh, modifiers, then you will simply add the modifiers also. Now I can go ahead and search for my rating control, or I can jump into the modifiers and research or jump onto resize fill modifier. So this is actually pretty cool. And uh, this is going to be very, very beneficial when you're working in a team environment. So I hope you like this video. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a course called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 17 plus hour course and it covers everything you can imagine about Swift UI. I'm constantly updating the course also. 
So you can see that we start with building list and navigation, and we even take a deep dive into MVVM design pattern, APIs consuming, and also core data. I also go down into uh, the recipes where I talk about building a rating view, and I'm also covering Swift 2.0. We have already have all of these amazing lectures and I keep on adding more and more and more stuff to it, making it better. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the link in the YouTube description. Simply click on the link and get the course. Please, if you want to get this course or any of my other courses, use the link in the YouTube description. That will be very, very helpful. Uh, your support really means a lot to me. Uh, I do want to do this like full time. So if you do want to support me, please use the links to, to get these videos, buy the courses. They are not that expensive. Uh, I worked hundreds and hundreds of hours on those courses and you're getting it for a very, very, very big discount. So please use the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much and thank you so much again for supporting my videos.